Hey, good morning, Dave. Happy BS Fridays. Happy BS Friday to you as well. How are you today? Oh, uh, I'm good. Uh, I I never say TGIF, uh, so I so I can't say that. But I'll say, uh, uh, what do you say, TGIBS? TGIBS. Thank goodness it's Building Science Friday. We need to add an F to the end of it. TGIBSF. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We're going to get t-shirts made. What was that? We'll get t-shirts made. When am I getting them made? Yeah, the t-shirts for that. Uh, okay, I'll do it. I just ordered a bunch of other shirts. I'll do that. Love That's it. a great challenge, Dave. It is a great challenge. So, all right, listen, Mark, we are again live on uh, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, and there's some there's some great news, Mark. I mean, now uh, the the streaming service that we're using allows us. Let me show you. I think we have some stuff in there already. Allows us to. There you go. At, put things up on the screen and say hello. Do you know that guy? ATN. ATN. Greetings. Greetings, my brother. Yeah, yeah. Hey, ATN. Nice to see you, my friend. Let's talk one of these days soon. I miss you, man. So. We're going to be wow. able to do stuff like that through the whole show uh, and just put it up there. Uh, we'll try not to do it, uh, you know, to where it's distracting uh, because I think they're just going to keep coming in like this one. Good morning, George Ryman. Shorefoot Foundations, Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for joining us this morning. George, so we're going to be able to responded live. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we have a pretty exciting show today. That is a incredible. I've never seen that. Uh, I think you're beating these TikTok people up right now. You're faster than them, Dave. Hey, did you? I got my dance down. <laughs> right. I, we'll we'll do a TikTok dance. I, I have kids, and uh, tick, I'm getting bigger on TikToks. I think I have like eight followers. I uh, I did a lot of postings at the beginning of the year, and then uh, it didn't recognize you know, uh, something by email or phone number. And, uh, so I got to deal with technology to get back to my own account. That's right. I love it. I love the copper mug too. Well, listen, if you are joining us today, whether you're on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, we are sitting with Mark bare naked Willie, and he is not naked. Uh, but it's a great, it's a great term. And I'm sure we're going to learn a little bit more about it today. Uh, wherever you are from, we would love it if you could put it in the comment section. We'll flash it up on the screen to let everybody know where people are joining in from. We had people from all over the world last time, uh, and I think that would be great. And please, this is an interactive conversation. We want to hear your comments. We want to, whether you agree or you disagree, uh, and please like and hit that share button right now. We want to get as many people involved in the building science as we possibly can because it's not only good for building. It's good for the environment. It's good for everything we're doing, and uh, we need to make it a better place for our kids moving forward. How's that for an intro? And that couldn't be said better. I second that. Uh, wherever people are coming from, the questions they have, uh, whether they agree, disagree, or have more insight, bring it forward because uh, we're a collective community, right? And we, we grow are. together. Hey, Shane. We are. Yeah. Shane's joining us from Ohio, which is great. Thanks for joining us, Shane. All right. So, Mark, you uh, it, have been, you know, involved with T-Stud. I didn't know you this it, when this happened, but I was lucky enough to meet Brian Iverson at the Builder Show out in Las Vegas. Uh, and, and we decided to do an interview together. And I have that interview. I haven't I haven't posted it yet. Just COVID and everything else has changed what we do. Obviously, we're live now six days a week. Um, but what he has developed, you know, along with, I'm sure his team, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And considering today is all about engineered thermal breaks and wood and everything else. I love it. Why don't, why don't you give us a quick intro? And I think uh, Brian should be joining us. So we should bring him into this conversation and, and, and hop right into it. What do you think? So uh, I, 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 I will grab two dowels, right? Two hybrid dowels. I'll start a little drum roll. And uh, Brian is visiting us from Ham Lake. He's our first. He's our first guest to talk about uh, energy efficiency. Right? Last week we we talked about third party. Like, 
and we and we kind of got into the weeds, but we dialed it back. So so now how to get there, right? right. And uh, you've been doing modular for a long time, uh, Dave, and and both of us know about efficiency, and uh, and we bring that to our projects. So you know it's all about our industry and the yeah. and the products and the people we know. So I'll do the drum roll, and you you bring on Brian. All right. This is like magic, man. Watch. I think he does. He pop up in up. Let's make a guess. Will he pop up in the middle or on the side? I can't control it. I say middle. I say middle. Oh! I'll tell you what. I'm gonna pop you out and pop you and pop you back in. How about that? Wow. Hi hat. Hi hat. Oh, this, this is like where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Under we which? The, we can do the cups. Huh? <laughs> we can do the cups. All right. So Brian, 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 last time I saw you, other than just some banter back and forth on social media, was at uh, IBS in Las Vegas. And we did an interview and we talked a little bit. Well, I can't say that. We talked a lot about your about T-Stud and what you've developed. And uh, you really dove, dove into the scientifics behind it and the engineering. And this is such a unique product uh, that, you know, Mark, and I know Mark got involved with you on this. Uh, it, it's well worth being part of Building Science Friday, and we wanted to we wanted to bring you on. So thank you so much for taking time. I know you're busy to share this with us and our audience. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. I appreciate the time. I uh, when when we met, I think I just had a half a cup of of some latte thing, and I was pretty ramped up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. You you yeah. know that that interview will come out soon, and. Uh, I, th I think it. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a real. This will be a really good introduction to it because I think we'll we go into some depth on this, but this will at least be somewhere else they can learn about it. All right. right. We've, all, we've all had a passion for this for the whole entire time, right? Building science, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Trying to minimize the ability of um, or save people's heating and cooling bills, right? Don't stop throwing money out the window. Open up the window and let turn the heat on, right? So it's it's been a passion for a very long time. It just came to fruition overnight and it all happened. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yep, yep. Well, perfect. Perfect. So why don't we jump into this? I mean, you know, let's, let's, let's get an overview of what is T stud. Like just give me the short overview of how this all came about for you. Okay. Um, I was in the gas and oil industry before this, uh, uh, got hired by a company to turn uh, fly ash, the waste byproduct of a coal fired power plant into ceramic beads for fracking. And we figured out how to get uh, normal sand out of Wisconsin, frac sand, crushes six, 7,000 PSI. We made these crush at 14,000. So I was sitting in North Dakota in the gas and oil Bakken play up there. And I got up one morning, went and had uh, coffee with some friends. And uh, for some of you who don't know, North Dakota, most of North Dakota never really had a building code. And um, uh, so you could, go up there, build whatever you want, hope somebody bought it. And you know, if it passed inspection, there weren't any inspections. You had electrical and you had a foundation inspection. Other than that, you closed and off you went. But it was a windy, windy morning in February and the snow was blowing through an outlet. Yeah. And just like that, I thought of the T stud. You know, it's uh, at five minutes later, I was in my truck driving home. Eight hours later, I figured out that if nobody had the patents, nobody thought crazy enough outside of the box and how all the benefits were. I just have an oddball skill set, and uh, which allows me to sit here today in front of everybody else who's listening and watching to us. So, yeah. anyway, but that's where that's where it all came from. So, I bet you haven't lost any sleep over this whole thing at all, have you? Uh, we will not talk about COVID nineteen on this uh, channel. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will not. We will. Yeah, not. yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's uh it's fun because it. Um, you know, I never was an inventor. Um, I never, I never had this hat. I never thought of it, but it took, you know, I, I, I look at this as it, it took to get out of the real estate industry as a whole and to be able to, you know, you're in, you're in a job setting and you're focused at this to do your job, run through life, do everything you need to do. And you pretty much have blinders on. And when your whole life goes into a topsy turvy, into a turmoil, then you start looking this way, right? Because you're looking for opportunities and you're, you're trying to open it up so that you could take in a lot. And it's just because of that opportunity, I just happened to think of it. And yeah, so. Sure, sure. 
Well, let's, let's let's jump into the science of this. I know this is where Mark wants to really uh, chime in. I can see him uh, champing at the bit over there. Um, so, Mark, I know that uh, you just one. We everybody knows you you love science of uh, building science and passive house and anything green and you know things of that nature, which is awesome. What 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 had your interest about T stud? So, uh, you know, uh, not a lot of people. Not everyone knows that uh, that I was a framer and a builder, right? So when uh, when you have that background, you're used to uh, hockey stick boards, right? Uh, and you're used to them changing when they're in the wall. Uh, so that's one aspect, right? So I was attracted to T-Stud because of its, its strength. And uh, the other part is um, – I've never been a, a fiberglass bat kind of guy. I've always been a high performance wall guy. So I was attracted by the fact that I could make my job easier and make my buildings healthier and more comfortable, right? Uh, just by changing the stud. And uh, my father was a lumber uh, a buyer and, and operations manager my whole life. So I knew studs, right? But uh, why hadn't this come about? Uh, so I embraced it full force and got to talking mm -hmm. with Brian and that's where the, the rodeo came to town. Yeah. Love it. No, I, I love it. You know, and as, uh, as you know, Mark, you know, this is a, you know, we invite people on this show that are doing very unique things and changing the way we think in our industry. It's not a, it's not a paid for event at all. It's about keeping it real. So, I think that I think what's a lot of fun here is learning about the technology behind this. So I have seen this product. I have held this product and it was it was almost feather light. It's amazing when you really think about what it is. That's the one thing I remember. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is so light. Let, let's hop into uh, let's hop into this a little bit and start talking. Show us the product. Maybe that's where we need to start. Who well, wants to do it? Brian? One. This is one. Right, or I should say, this is one. This is where we started in R19 T stud. Yeah. So R19 T stud came about, and actually, there's actually uh, out of uh, 35 patents, there's 34 that blew it. Just 34 stayed an inch and a half wide. They didn't understand the benefits of turning this member perpendicular and what that would do for every building, every structure made and known to man. Nobody so figured that out. So Brian, do do me a favor and just explain what the pieces are so the audience can really understand what you're holding up there. Just give uh, just to give an overview of what we have here. Okay, Mark, do you, you don't have the regular T stud, do you with the just the No, I got I, okay. I got the bare naked. Okay, so inside of this is this frame. Okay. Yep. And then we just happen to put a poly ISO type one foam over the top of it all. And we increased the R value of this from well, a two by six, our value is uh, 6.8. And this ends up being, actually it's 19.7. So it's, we call it 19. So those uh, are two by threes. That's a two by six cut in half. Is that what I'm hearing? No, no. If you cut a two by six in half, the knots are too close to the edge. So this is a two by three. These are from the tops of the trees. So you can't have a knot too big, too close to the edge. So yep. literally we buy boards, no more than one eighth of an inch twist and eight feet. And I'm going to say that 95% probably of what we sell and what we're able to make is an eighth of an inch twist or less. And then we end up with those few oddballs. So this is the R19. This is where we started. Top plate, bottom plate, studs, cripples, king studs. A couple million feet sold, a couple hundred houses. We started with houses to stay out of the commercial until we figured out what we didn't know. So, so what, 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 so talk about the construction, how, how, so we got two, but we got two, two by threes on, on both sides. And what is, what is the, cause this is where the ingenious comes in. Tell me about what's holding those together and how you came up with this idea. Okay. Well, we started, uh, I don't have all the original prototypes up here. We started with nails and screws and square dowels. We started, we started with everything. Uh, we started with, uh, uh, type two, uh, uh, pink board in the middle. But when you took a match to it, it it lit up, lit up, it didn't light up on fire, but the foam was gone in 2.2 seconds. Uh, this foam, I have a video online, 20, 25 minutes long. I can't burn a hole in it because it doesn't, it doesn't ignite or it doesn't do anything. It just charged like wood. So we passed all the ability to be able to be a top plate because we passed all of the 
test at UL. Um, anyway, so we put the dowels in place. The, uh, the adhesive we use is the same adhesive that they make finger joint material out of. Uh, so it's heat resistant, moisture resistant. Uh, we have tested the modulus of elasticity and figured out that the strength of us in a bend test is directly related to the modulus of elasticity of the dowel. So if the dowel bends by one one sixty fourth, you take one one sixty fourth times the number of dowels all the way across. And uh, big difference from ponderosa pine to to Doug fir, hemlock fir, uh, black spruce. Uh, so um, it's been quite ingenious. It's been it's taken a long time. We actually broke ten thousand boards before we became a product. Uh, so we're going to put out a video here sometime in the next couple of weeks, and um, we're going to show thirty tests breaking. They start at fifteen hundred pounds to go to three thousand pounds. Just an uh, eight, eight, nine, and ten footers. So structurally, we're certified to hold eight thousand six hundred pounds, but you can't use it. Um, unless you put it on concrete or steel. So structurally, completely knocked it out of the park. I, I mean, I love this. So we, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to take a stop here. We got, I mean, comments are flying in right now. So let's, let's, we're going to try and pace through this and we're going to try and keep on pace and get through everything we want to get through. But holy mackerel, look at this already. So um, let me, let me go to the first one. So well, we have, I don't know who it is. You got to, you got to make yourself public. New guy here learning. <laughs> learning hats on right uh, we have miles dick great to put a face to the voice mark so oh, thank miles. you mark uh morning, miles we got uh, we got hudson valley in the in new york in the house got to make yourself public we want to see you man all right let's get into some of this stuff here we got andrew seeley coming in from texas we got john mcgills i think you say that right northwest michigan and uh Miles Dick joining from the prairies of Canada. Been Love following it. your product for a while. Now, here's a here's somebody I don't know who it is, but here's something that they wrote. So I get the increased weight bearing and the increased spacing and savings associated with that. But is that is but is this also a significant considered thermal break in passive house building? I'm new to pH, but you would still need to build a service wall and a sweater wall. Correct or right? Now, before you answer this, is this something we're going to cover in the show already that we have outlined? We will. Yeah. Perfect. So, but I've never heard of a sweater wall. What's a sweater? Uh, wall? Brian, he's talking about uh, exterior insulation, right? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. So, uh, I see. Put your coat on the. Please, please show your faces. Uh, if you don't, we get it. But uh, hey, we're Passive House fans, and uh, our faces are right here. So join the party. Come to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is BS Friday, man. Bring your beer. Bring your wine. It's five o'clock somewhere. We were talking about Jimmy Buffett earlier. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna leave off there. We'll come back to some more comments so we can make sure we get through everything with everybody. So. Um, Brian, that was a great introduction to, to what the product is. What are the size of those dowels? Uh, 11 sixteenths. 11 sixteenths? A one by, we take a one by eight and we can get nine dowels out of it. Okay. Now we have, okay. a, it's, uh, it's, uh, the dowel that Mark is showing there is completely a hybrid. It's We right. built it for us in order to get the adhesive to transfer up and down laterally on the dowel and not wipe it all off. Sure. So, let, let's let's dive into the science of this a little bit. I think you know one of the first things we want to talk about was thermal bridges. Let's uh, let's hop into this thermal bridges and give us give us a bit of an education if you don't mind. Okay, this is your standard standard go to wall in the industry. So before before we showed up, there's a, a minimum of sixteen percent to as much as twenty eight percent thermal bridge in a wall. So not going to fault anybody. But this is this is what was available to you until now. Okay, so these are, you know, here here we are. This is Lincoln Logs, right? That's where we all started with me, nineteen sixty. Okay, so if there's this much transfer in your wall, this is the section that's inefficient. So if you're gonna want to build, um, uh, try to insulate and increase the effectiveness of the R value throughout the wall, you need to unhook. You need to unhook all this crap. Right, you need to stop the ability of the cold to come through or the heat to go through that wall, and so we we wanted that was our number one goal was to get that done as efficiently as possible, 
And now we're going to go from 20 feet a minute to make product. And in a year from now, we'll be at 95 feet a minute. So, okay. So that's what you want to do. Um, so, and this is where we're going, right? So, so this is, this is 0.8% 0. 0. Uh, thermal transfer, 0. 0.8. So, and once you put insulation across that, so the first thing you got to do as a contractor, builder, architect, engineer, whatever your hat says, you need to unhook the bridges. And that's how you massively increase the effective R value of whatever kind of insulation it is that you want to use. We don't care what kind of insulation you want to use, but you got to unhook the bridges. That's number one. Okay. So. Explain, explain to what unhooking the bridges is just in layman's term. You got to stop the ability to transfer the heat through the entire two by six, right? And how does that do it? How do we do it? Yeah, show it, show like where that break is. Okay, so this is your dowel. That's the only yep. transfer that we have left. And once you wrap insulation around that, there's hardly anything. Um, this, no lie, uh, at, we heated up one wood member to 132 degrees. And after two hours, we had no transfer. So I cranked up the heater to 194 because that's all the higher it would go before we started a fire. Yeah. And I finally got three degrees temperature transfer after 90 minutes. Well, sure, it's going to keep on going. But like the gentleman from Arizona, you sit in Arizona and you heat up that wood member. I guarantee you that if you're going to hang a picture in the morning, you don't need to have a stud finder, right? You don't need a stud finder. Just put your hand on the wall. You can feel the heat burning right through the wall. Okay. Unhook that sucker, right? That's what you got to do. Unhook it. Stop it from affecting your pocketbook. Your yeah. client can afford it, right? When gas went to $4 a gallon, when gas went to $4 a gallon, sorry, I'm passionate. When gas went to $4 yeah. a gallon in 2008, right? We all figured out that nobody could afford the gas because they had to have milk for the baby. So, hey. Hey, I love it. I love it. So, I mean, I'm going to stop you like that because, you know, you guys live and breathe this stuff. We have a lot of people joining us who do not live and breathe this stuff. So, um, for anybody out there, no question is a dumb question for this. Because uh, no, no. Fire they, away. This, this, this is, this is kind of like what I do in modular. I take it for granted everything I know, right? Yep. And it's the little details that make the difference. And I think that's what people have to, I think that's what we have to do. And I want to break it down and really make sure people understand what you did. Okay, this is a two by six, right? Five and a half inches. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's not five and a half. Our stud is five and a half. That's five and five and a quarter. Right, that that happens all the time. So every one of our studs, sorry, I'm not going to be a sales pitch, but every one of our studs are five and a half. So if you're framing, you're the sheet rocker. You don't have to worry about stuff breaking off. Right, love it, love it. All right, let's jump into it then. Air tightness. So that's the next question. Something tells me this doesn't leak a whole lot of air. Would that be accurate? Uh, you know what? Okay, so I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> 19, Jump in anytime you want, Mark. <laughs> no, no, I uh, it's my favorite Mark, subject, so I, I like the Minnesota version better than the Chicago version. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we in 1980 about we went to Category One construction, late 80s, whatever. Right, build that house as tight as you can, build the building as tight as you can, and if you had one little pinhole, all of the all of the moisture from in the house went out that pinhole, and we literally rotted out walls in 2.2 seconds it's not like okay so i know that Etienne is on here right? right all the little flashing details that he's got to set your window in we didn't have any of that stuff right had we had those details back then we'd have been fine we chased every stucco manufacturer out of the state of minnesota because they all got sued guess what state of minnesota should have got sued right every action has a reaction sometimes you don't like the reaction so anyway uh you take a, you take a um like go to go to this one, right? You're trying to seal up. You're trying to seal up every single place that you can in the wall to stop the ability of air to transfer through. And you need to dumb it up, right? It's so so. If you use the T stud for the bottom plate, uh, and we we use uh, uh, in in all my little samples and stuff, I I uh, I use the that Dupont froth pack thing, and I spray foam right through the middle. And I stop the ability of that that air to transfer. I don't need to caulk anything down anymore. I just, I, as fast as you can walk through the house, pour a bead of caulk through them or a, of a type one foam is what it is. Shoot that down through the middle. I mean, I don't know how many carpenters or framers or concrete guys you ever saw that do flat block 
Uh, but this is always a gap. It's a gap everywhere. And how do you cock that? Sometimes it's a half inch thick. Well, you stick that foam underneath there and you just rigid up your whole structure and you stop the ability of air to leak. Um, I know other companies, you know, you if you picture frame inside, you know, you stop the ability of the air. So, so first thing you have to do is increase the effective R value of the wall assembly itself. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, stop, stop the ability of the air from the outside coming in and the air on the inside when your furnace is under, you know, pressurizing your house, stop it from pushing all your cold air or your heat to the outside, right? So control your air changes per hour. We're just helping give everybody some little tools to make it simple, you know, trying to dumb, dumb it up, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, listen, you know, this, these are new ideas. These are new concepts that make a whole lot of sense and uh, dumbing it up is how the rest of the world's going to understand what it is. And I love it. And I think, uh, I think the way you're explaining that absolutely makes sense. I spray foam the whole, you know, rim joist and, you know, that hit my sill plate in my basement and it made in a dramatic difference in, in, in the house, not only, not only with the uh, cooling and, and airflow and stuff, but heck, even I saw less spiders after I did it. Ah, <laughs> I hate yeah. spiders. Yeah. I live in the woods. They can't eat. There's no places for them to hide anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I love it. Let's. Uh, I'm going to get through a few more comments that people have been putting in here and just give some shout outs. Uh, yeah. Tim Montague, solar expert. We kind of talked about this already. Can you explain the thermal insulation features of the naked stud, please? I don't know. Did we talk about the? Do we know the difference between a naked stud and a? bare naked stud and a non-naked stud? Like, do we have a cloth stud? Yeah. This is with foam in the middle, right? Yeah. So this is our first product, the T-stud. Got but it. So so as far as cavity insulation goes, 58% of all builders do a fiberglass bat in the cavity. Right. And 38 or 39% do a blown in or a spray in product, okay? So 50% of our phone calls that we got since we started, they don't want to pay the money to get that foam on the inside when they want to insulate it themselves. So it took us a long time. That's where that custom made dowel came in and some other things came into play in order to figure out how to become code compliant on the bare naked tea stud without the foam. So bare naked, no foam. You can dress it yourself, dress it with whatever kind of insulation you want, insulate the cavity. Obviously the higher the R value uh, inch uh, per inch of insulation uh, increases your overall effective R value of the wall assembly itself. So we did we did our first bare naked tea stud house in Minneapolis here. They did five inches of spray foam in the middle. Obviously we recommend the HFO blowing agent and get rid of that off gas crap. And um, so they got their average R value of 35. They re I'm, I'm positive they reduced their furnace size by 60,000 BTUs and their air conditioner by two tons. Right. Right. That's awesome. Right. right. Get rid of all that big duct work and get all that duct work. Right. I mean, I'm going to push the envelope here. Right. Because I can is uh, you got an eight by eight or an eight by 12 duct work running all over the place. But just make your walls more energy efficient and start running everything in a little plastic pipe. You can run three inch pipe all the way around your house. That's how efficient you can make them. Love it. I love it. I, I, you know what? You, you don't like this stuff at all. I can tell. No, <laughs> you've, you've been doing it long enough that you don't get red in the face though i love it you know you just got you just, you just know what you know and you love it and i think that's great so a couple more quick shout outs and we're going to continue on this conversation right so uh ethan sherman from new uh, newbury port mass is joining us which is cool another no face new guy in the hudson valley jeff oh, X. jeff okay. jeff i met this week uh that uh he was on the Passive House call. Nice to see okay. you, Jeff. Good. Love it. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. We already, Jim uh, is coming in from, or Tim's coming in from Illinois. Uh, There's a lot of good questions on there. Okay? There is. And if if people want to just email me, I will be more than happy this weekend to to answer a whole a whole bunch of them. Right. They, those are good questions. They're they're good. There are. We're gonna we're gonna get into more of them. I just want to give some shout out, Jeffrey E. Better question mark. Yeah, Better he was coming up uh, before. That's 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 Jeff. He was coming up before. Okay, and now yeah, he yeah, had yeah. Face. All right. I'm glad you're paying attention. Thank yes. you. Thank you. All right. So here we, Josh. I think we'll probably save this one for the end, but I'm going to put it up there now. You know what? I'm going to save Josh for a minute because he gets into cost. Um, you mentioned Etienne. Etienne, here's a question. 
Are your customers typically using T-Stud in combination with continuous exterior installation or, or, or instead of it? Here in Minnesota, I have experienced a certain resistance to continuous exterior installation and could see T-Stud as an easy implement solution to improve the envelope. So before you, before you answer that, you know, Etienne is an envelope guru. He Not gets this right. stuff inside and out. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think it's very important to note that. That's a great question, Etienne. Go ahead. Okay, so, so far, uh, the people have gravitated towards the R19 and the bare naked in order to eliminate the R5, okay? I'm not um, R5, R10, you know, whatever it ends up being, it's all about the effective R value. You need, to, you need to unhook the bridges, but we also have a number of people and jobs coming up that I can see where they use the, the, the uh, T-stud in combination with an R5 zip wall or one of those other uh, name brand products like them, right? They want to do a combination of both because that effective R value, uh, you can get up into the upper 20s if you do a combination of both, even with a, a fiberglass. Like the effective R value of a, of a bare naked T-stud with blown in fiberglass in the wall with an R5 on the outside, you are... I think it's 28 without looking. Effective R value for the whole wall assembly, not including the wall, uh, windows and doors. And R value 28. How sick is that? Okay. So um, unhook the bridges, right? Save your clients money. That's another T-shirt and a hat. Unhook the bridges. Unhook the. Come yeah, on, Mark. So right? Listen, I'm, I'm. We're setting up a whole new business on on quotes. Love it. A ATN is uh, is is an expert. He makes tapes and membranes that are specific to air tightness. So when we get into continuous insulation, effective R value, and that air tightness, uh, you know he's he's the cream of the crop. So that question was pointing. And I think you I think you answered it pretty damn direct, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yep. I agree. And you know, Etienne. Uh, I mean, if you don't know Etienne, you should. That's all I have to say. He's yep. CEO of uh, Siga North America, and I have to tell you, I've spoken to him. I had him on uh, our branding show once, so I'm I'm really excited. And thank you for joining, Etienne. It's always it's always great when you take time to spend with us. He right. uh, he came and presented one time for us, and and we had a competition uh, where he had wall assembly mock-ups, and we got to use the tapes and the membranes and. Uh, I'll toot my own horn here. Uh, my team of myself and, a, and an architect, uh, there was 30 teams and we won. So good job. I, I, I think I won a case of, uh, of uh, Ricola, right? Because he's, uh, he's from Switzerland, right? Yeah, love it. Let me get a couple more people up here real quick because there's so many comments coming in. We're going to get to this one, I think, better for the end, talking about cost. How does this compare in cost with conventionally framed wall and continuous XPS on the exterior? So, uh, Mark, remind me, let's make sure we come back to that. Yeah. All right. Uh, George Ryman. Hey, buddy. Arizona Trade Secrets. He's going to have to elaborate. Maybe I'm not on the inside of that one. Tell me, George. I'm, I want to know more. Yeah, yeah. Lay it on the line, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miles, uh, Dick, what's the effective R value of a five and a half inch naked stud spray foamed assembly? Uh, uh, 35. Yep. Yeah, five inches of foam. Five, five inches of foam? Yeah, yeah. That's, so there's a difference in, in uh, um, foam. I'm getting to be an analytical at this for spray foam. There's yep. a difference between HFO, HFC blowing agents in the foam. Different manufacturers have perfected the HFO more than other ones. Um, Demolic, they're up uh, 7.25 per inch. Sick, crazy foam. They get, uh, they're they're working on one right now, seven inches of lift. So I made a video yesterday how to turn the five and a half inch bare naked T stud into seven and a quarter for uh, redneck cheap in the field. Right, so watch that. But they can do that sucker in one pass. Uh, it's um, I'm I'm impressed with technology. Obviously, I I can't get enough of it. We get only a, BS Fridays, only yeah. BS Fridays can bring in redneck and uh, and and engineered studs and building science all together. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, right? There's a lot of people out there with great ideas that have reached out. I I commend everybody. Go for it, right? Yeah, yeah. I love right. it. I love it. 
Um, all right, so I got more stuff rolling in, and then we're going to get into the next one here in just a second. But I think these are, I'm trying to be relevant. And hey, listen, if I go through this and at the end I missed your question, call me out immediately and we'll make sure we do it because that is not the intent to pass anybody over. This yeah, one I'm excited about. What's that? We need their BS. We do need their BS. All right, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about this one, right? My World's Modular, this is Alex Berlin. Alex Berlin is with Rochester Modular Homes. Um, so the fact that some of these modular manufacturers are tuning into this, uh, that's a good thing. He's a young guy. He's innovative. Uh, I had the pleasure to meet and work with him, you know, and I think uh, this is awesome. So, Alex, thanks for joining us. Can you give us an example of blower door test results on a T-stud frame house what type of foundation, cavity insulation, exterior insulation, exterior cladding, WRB, are you using, suggesting, testing? Okay. Thanks, so testing is a, a million dollar equation for us at this point, right? Because how many wall assemblies are there? 100. So I can't answer that exactly, Alex, but I can tell you that in your world, you have Dave Tompos from NTA, super brilliant man. Uh, when we turn that board member perpendicular, this allows you to put adhesive on two, two and a quarter inches, call it, because you got the eased edge on each side. You're used to doing one inch, right? A quarter inch of eased edge on both sides. You got to try to split your drywall in the middle on a perfectly straight stud that you don't own. Okay, so if you can put these to the inside and the outside, wherever you have a seam, okay, we're talking to one company right now about putting this into their software. And uh, this is a pretty slick deal for you. You want to control air changes per hour? I can tell you our blower door tests are sick if they do the whole system. I have uh, her score ratings down sub 29. Wow. Right? Say it again, sub what? Sub 29. The lower the score on a her score rating, the better and more energy efficient the structure. So yes, we have one builder who consistently gets below 29. So what, what, what is kind of the average builder getting? Like somebody that's just stick framing a house or oh, even modular for that matter? 70. 70. 70, a, a two by four wall, R13 bat in Arizona, that's 100. That, was, that was, used to be the standard, right? If you, if you all don't try to build the house correctly, right? Then BS stands for bowling score and you have a high number, right? <laughs> oh. So uh, a bowling score in housing is not the intention. And what you find is because the product's on the market, if people are savvy and looking for them, and, and practicing their wall assembly and putting it together, the Hearst store goes down, right? Their craftsmanship is the same. Tradesmen mm -hmm. have incredible craftsmanship, yeah. but their access to materials and, and the thought process of that wall assembly, that's giving them results and that's what they want. That's bragging rights, right? My, yeah. my score is a golf score, it's lower. Your score is a bowling score, good night. I love it. But we do know in golf that you don't get those low scores, do you? Not me. Not me. <laughs> yeah. I started an 84 and I didn't play the second nine. Yeah. All right. Here's another one. Yes. Break out your drumsticks. You should do that on top of your mic. You can really annoy people on that one. <laughs> there it is. I know this answer. Ethan uh, Sharp. I, I know this one to a T because I just said it yesterday in a video. All right. So a two by six wall with an R19 bat. Um, is uh, uh, is a U value of 0 .04, 0 0.041, and the T stud with blown in fiberglass is 0 0.042. So it's one one thousandth difference, right? So I'm assuming everybody on this call is trying to get to the lowest U value possible, right? That's how you make an energy efficient wall. So the uh, average R value was I uh, well, it's one off uh, for the two, right? But yep. we're one third the cost maybe of putting full money outside kind of give you an idea depends upon where you're at right trucking shipping uh retail markup wholesale markup uh the t studs the t studs uh, we know what we sell these for on a wholesale basis but there's uh the prices have gone pretty high uh we just shipped a load uh to uh, a project in south carolina uh we were able to top load a load of uh a load of um granite coming out of canada heading to Georgia and they picked it off the top and we got it down there for 800 bucks. So we're able to job pack across the country. We have quite a bit of logistics figured out. 
Ethan Sherman, thanks, man. Really appreciate you chiming in. Uh, you've, you've been chiming in, and I love it that you're so interested in this stuff. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. All right, Brian, uh, we're going to move into the next uh, topic here. But real quick, because you just mentioned that packing. What is the weight difference between this and a regular pack of regular studs? Uh, we're Right now, we're averaging one, one pound, 10 ounces per foot. Okay. So 20 on, a, on a load in the United States. Uh, not a B train in Canada. Miles Dick can help you out there. Uh, but uh, we're one pound, 10 ounces. We can literally load 27,000 lineal feet on a truck. So, so we have uh, how many lineal feet on a truck? 27,000. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, yeah. everybody. I thought <laughs> Brian was analytical. I guess Dave is. Yep. I am quick. I, I've, I've had my uh, coffee. I got my. Uh, I got my signature coffee mug here. Oh, so, I got one too. I know where you got that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, right? Uh -huh. Hey, so we talked about the structural strength quite a bit already. Yeah. What, what in the daylights does electrical speed have to do with any type of engineered wood product? Because that one has me baffled. Okay. It's really simple. Okay. Because uh, back in the late 70s, I was the guy who had to sweep the floor, hang the sheetrock. I was the guy to schlep around all the studs, right? So that electrician would send his little entry level guy and he would drill a hole all the way through every single stud all the way around, right? And the bigger the hole, the bigger the mess and I had to sweep it up, okay? So if you can imagine that you can walk in and wire that, right? You can go fast. I'm not saying that you don't have to staple. I think you have to staple every four feet, but there's no more drilling. You fly through these houses, uh, through the yeah. T-stone. They're just, uh, they're not drilling holes anymore. They're just taking a half inch carriage bolt and a hammer, walking around and slamming a hole through them. If they bump into a dowel, it won't go through. So move your carriage bolt up a half inch and punch another hole. So yes, it's it's extremely efficient. The um, In the technical evaluation report, we are gonna get permission to cut one inch out of this. So that you can get a two and a half inch vent pipe into that wall, right? LSL and LVL, one inch hole, that's all you get. We're going to get a two and a half inch hole in into the bare naked T stud. This is already a two and a half inch gap. So find the dowel, miss the dowel, and you can run your plumbing pipe inside of it. That's how structural we are. So yeah, it's all about speed and efficiency. So we're trying to little things, right? Little, little things, no more. Well, you're just going to stop the air from leaking, save time, save money, save labor. Yeah, we're, we're an engineered stud. All right, so I, I want to. I just so what I'm sitting here. I hear this stuff. My 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 brain starts going, and then we're gonna get on to the next thing here because we got we're really going on some time. I love it. All right, so here's the deal. So what I'm hearing is the cost savings of what you're doing is over over several factors. I mean, there's trade labor time here. There's insulation time. There's there's there there's plumbing, electrical. I mean, you're gonna be able to do things in your wall that cannot be done in other walls. You know, so, I mean, there's the actual cost of a product, which we haven't talked about yet, and we can elaborate, but yeah. just like modular and offsite construction in general, there's all these other ancillary costs that most people don't think of because they just say, well, I can get a two by six for a lot cheaper than that. Yep, you can. Is that accurate? All yep. right. Yep. All right. We're going to hop into that next. So I already know the answer to this, but I, I yes, Let, let's see what you got. Sound silence. Uh, we'd like to do a video. Uh, th this is this is a tough one. Um, we we have we have uh, people who stay at home a lot now who uh, are in our houses that can't hear the kids screaming next door anymore. They can't hear the the uh, lawnmower running anymore. They can't hear the road noise anymore because we've minimized the ability of the sound to transfer through. You take this. And that sound's going to run right through that, right? Heaven forbid if you had a steel stud, right? Sound transfers through that like nothing. Remember your hotel motel wall? Um, your hotel motel wall is supposed to have a score of 54. Well, we make it a score of 60. Um, only twice in my life have I been entertained by what goes on in that hotel room next door. Only twice. And otherwise, I don't want to hear it. Okay, so unhook, unhook it for thermal and unhook it for sound. There you go. That was simple enough. Love it. Love it. All right. 
We're going to take some real quick questions here, and then we have one more subject. Uh, plus, you know, we got to get back to some other questions. So let's just yep. see where we left off here. All right. Uh, Alex Bergen's got the honor that we are, we are we are code compliant in all of the United States and in Canada. And uh, so we're a simple replacement. Take that two by six out and stuff us in. So we're completely, um, uh, we are a direct replacement for a two by six, except for in shear and a floor, right? If you're trying to put the baby grand piano in right here in the middle of your floor, we don't have enough fiber going across. So not wind shear, but in shear for weight load, you know, you're trying to, I call it, if you're trying to drag your, your gun safe, 500 pound gun safe across the floor, we don't, we don't have all that fiber running across. We're not a floor product. We're a wall where we have a typical load and we're just right. taking the two by six out, stuff us in. It's a piece of cake. We've only had one red tag ever. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, George Ryman had a comment regarding it, the comment about finding in wall studs in Arizona during the summer, just putting it up there. <laughs> Just feel it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cambridge in the house. And then Adam White had a question. If you use passive purple, you would get 0 0.03 ACH. So explain that what that means to the rest of the world, please, because you obviously get it. Uh, Matt or um, uh, Mark. Yeah. So so Adam, greetings uh, to you in the UK. Uh, Ad Adam is an air tightness expert. Right. And he he. Like ATN, he delivers product that enhances the wall assembly. So uh, if you were in Passive House and you saw 0.03, uh, your friends would be jealous, right? They'd be buying you bourbon and, uh, and celebrating. So it's just like the bowling score. Uh, you, don't, you don't want the high number. So Brian went into detail earlier about where the – where the bottom of your plate hits the subfloor, right? And the, and the people go and caulk that. And then on the top plate on, the, on your wall, they go and caulk that. And then when it joins in, in the sum, uh, on the corners, they go ahead and caulk that. And uh, what, what, Al, what Adam is telling you uh, is they, they have a product that uh, turns around and it fills that. Uh, e either before you frame it or after you frame it, depending on what part of the assembly we're talking about. And um, so all of these are dealt with, just like the T-stud, is reducing air leakage, right? Reducing drafts long before we have a discussion about uh, insulation. Insulation is secondary to air tightness, always. Great answer. Um, hey, unless everybody, you mess up. Say it one more time. Unless you mess up. Like, All right. so what I mean by that is if you if you air seal, but you don't test and then you insulate and then you test. Well, how are you going to air seal? Well, that's a lot harder. So so build your wall, air seal, test it, then go insulate it. Go nuts. You want to test it again? Sweet. Go for it. That's what third party's for. I love it. Holds us accountable. Yep. Love it. Miles Dix, we've got customers pushing into passive house construction. Can we get to R40 or better? Yep. Yep. Do the, well, you're going to have to use some spray foam in order to do that, Miles. Uh, some, you can do a flash and bat uh, or something. You can, we have these actually coming out all the way up to 11 and a quarter. So our tall wall series uh, up to 11 and a quarter in depth. And then we don't really care. You can get to R40, no problem whatsoever. Just give me a year to get there. So I love it. R40. This, this, this is all wild. This is all water miles. But uh, yeah, with the R40, let us know what, what type of insulation your clients are looking for, Miles. And uh, there's uh, some redneck videos that Brian mentioned that uh, you're going to be mighty surprised at. Uh, I talked to a guy yesterday that's building a 20 inch wall, right? So he literally builds a two by six and then does something different. I can't get into it. And then another two by six. Well, the guy's building an R80 wall. Okay. So uh, it, 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 it's a different story. So when people say, well, I use an R13 bat, I'm like, why bother? Right. Just stand outside. Yep. All right. Let's keep moving, fellas. Jeffrey E. Uh, 
Are there any retailers in New York and how do you ship belt? You know, I think we can get to this at the end when we talk about cost, if you guys are good with that, so we can keep moving yeah. along. I yeah. uh, just want to make sure I don't miss some things and we'll answer that question as well. Um, Miles, uh, just as a comment to add to Alex's question, approval engineering requirement up here in Canada as well. Uh, Rick Hawkins is joining us. Hey, Rick, man, I hope all is well. Would be an interesting comparison to use this for modular exterior and R21 with OSB versus two by six plus zip since overdriven fasteners can create risk with zip. All right, give me, give me, a, give me a 10 second answer on that one. Okay, uh, it comes down to effective R value. So being an analytical, I also know how to do for years law calculations. Right. Right. So it all comes out to how many times do you open and close the door? How many geriatric dogs do you have? How many times do you let the cat out? Right. If you got a family with two children that are young and old, right? Effective R value. So the R value of 6.8 plus 5 is 11. We can't get down to 11 no matter what you stick into that. Okay. So um, I'm not going to. There's advantages to doing the R5 on the outside. Don't get me wrong. Okay, it, it brings a, uh, it's it's a uh, it's there. Okay, so effective R value. Solve for our effective R value and solve for error changes per hour, and you got yourself one heck of a wall assembly. Love it, love it. All right, last last uh, last thing we're gonna go through here. Bring your own what? Build your own wall. <laughs> Mister Acronym himself. Yeah. I know that's going to be part of I think that should be part of the show. Be trying to figure out what the heck you are talking about. I know it. I know it. All right. So build your own wall insulation, energy efficiency. Give us, give us the lowdown real quick, fellas. Okay. So in, um, in calculating, so the, the T stud is a, is a tool, right? It's a tool to help everybody else make effective R value achievable, attainable, but everybody has their own insulation of choice. Uh, I can't go out there and I'm not going to go out there and say, hey, you, you have to use this or you have to use that because you're trying to solve for something. Look at look, how many how many climate zones do we have, right? Eight. Climate zone eight is uh, ice house, right? Or uh, igloo in uh, in the Arctic. Um, so every every uh, every uh, climate zone has different challenges. Uh, do you have moisture? Do you not have moisture? How do you build a wall? Where does the poly go? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm not staying up at night to try to think through all those equations, okay, because they're ridiculous. So you're going to be able to build your own wall. We are just a tool to help you make a better wall, right? That's it. Okay, so we'll help you run all the calculations. Uh, we're going to post a whole bunch of them online. There's an Excel form that's going out there. Hopefully you like Excel and not Google Sheets. Um, I'm not a Google Sheets guy, but it's uh, we're trying to help you out build effectiveness. Not all of the not all of the uh, computer programs modeling understand what an inch and a half thermal break is, let alone a two and a half inch thermal break. There's computer programs out there that show a 24% reduction in heating bills, but a 5% cost increase for air conditioning. I don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, if you're what these do is these save 20,000 BTUs per hour on a 40 degree temperature swing day. That's what it is. That's the math. 20,000 BTUs per hour. So it's quite simple to calculate it out if you know how to run the programs longhand. I just happen to be a certified energy auditor. So from 1981. From 1981. Perfect. You've been doing it a while then is what you're trying to say. Eat it, live it, breathe it. All right. So here we had, we're going to go back to a couple of the other questions. One was, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get into Q&A here in a second, but one is where can where can they find your product uh, nationally, globally? Tell us, tell us how somebody would find what your product to use. Okay, so, so I got a, I got pretty big shoulders. What happens is when they call up, I, I I put it on my I put it on my shoulder and I start I start heading their way. So I don't know ex the exact day I'm going to get there, but depending on where they are, I could run pretty fast. So I, I'm not even coming back on screen. So you're telling me you got you got a T stud bare naked backpack? I carry it on my shoulders. So so when it, when it, whenever someone asks wh where is it and and where and when can I get it, uh, I always ask the same question, right? What size? What quantity? Yeah, because yeah. I got to know how many shoulders I got to fill up. So uh, look, the logistics is all worked out. 
uh, like any product in North America, right? Uh, the, the key is what do, you, what do you need? When do you need it? How many do you need? And uh, there's a network of really smart people, right? That that can deliver that to you. So uh, j- just get us on the horn uh, and and figure out what you need and when you need it. And uh, and usually people ask how to use it, right? There's a whole YouTube channel that has many videos from Brian on how to use it. But, but how to get it is a simple question of what do you need and how much of it do you need? We okay. do have job packing now figured out. Uh, yes, we're going to manufacture in, in uh, well, these products right here will be manufactured in Canada because uh, the majority of two by three material is old growth timber and comes out of Eastern Canada from Ontario heading East. Okay. So if we build, if we build this in Canada, it's called enhanced lumber. There's no tariff. So we save 11 cents a foot on just the cost of the lumber. So we just pass that on to you. So that's why we're up in Thunder Bay. Uh, that's what we're going to start out there. We're next to uh, our timber and you can't you can't build the studs with frozen timber so we're within four hours drive to make sure it doesn't get frozen but we have we have uh job packed logistics figured out in the country we have companies who have reached out to do distribution uh of us all across the country we have lumber yards who are reaching out on a daily basis to try to figure out how to stock us and uh in the future so just so you understand one of our challenges is is this is a whoops This is a finger joint, long finger joint. So we have to have number two material. So we figured out that if we take all of the lumber, stud grade number three, uh, MSR number two, we can just finger joint them all together and then we're 99% straight. So it's it's a finger joint will be a thing of the the future to uh, make a more structural stable product, right? We, We all hate walls that move, nothing worse than cracks especially the modular home industry. Thank goodness we're two and a half inches wide and uh, we're going to, we're going to minimize the ability. You put, you put a, a, a glue on there and you glue your sheathing on and you glue your drywall on and minimize those cracks. That's what it's all about. All right. So that's leading us in the Q and a, and that's perfect because I saw, I actually missed one from a modular manufacturer, Rochester home. Alex asked, do we need to get engineered to stamp the use of your stud in combination with the rest of our building practices in order to submit the home for building permit? No, our first red tag, uh, they did not have the T-studs uh, uh, in the building plans themselves. Mm-hmm. When the building inspector came in, uh, took one look at that, no, no chance, and red tagged the house, walked away. That's also the same house that we had seven dowels cut that plumber had to aim, I'm telling you. We've never had one cut since. I made sure. I, I have made videos on how to avoid cutting the dowels. Okay, but um, uh, we, so one red tag. Sure, we've had lots of questions. We've had building inspectors a- ask all sorts of things, and uh, so they just get me on the phone. I walk them through it. No big deal. Well, Mark will be able to do that in the future, and in the future, the distributors we're educating them so that they can answer the same questions. But it's all in the technical evaluation reports, and they're all online. Yeah, love it, love it. Anybody know that one? Energy efficient, lower cost, lower right, lower labor. You can't hear the noisy neighbors. Genius, even bigger smile. So, Jennifer uh, is the behind the scenes today on this one. But Jennifer, uh, just so you know, runs her. Uh, you know, she's the host of Building Modular on Tuesdays. So um, it'll be interesting to to see if anybody brings any questions up about T studs on that this Tuesday coming up. So. All right. So Adam White, I mean, he's just an active guy right here. Love it, Adam. Thanks for tuning in. Passive House certified. Uh, I guess that's the European Passive House, <laughs> the way he's spelling it. All right. Al, I don't know how to say that. Athens and Athens. Al A. Can you say that one, Mark? Yeah. So so Al is uh, Al's a buddy from uh, up in Wisconsin, uh, technical uh, genius and, and innovator. We go way back. And, uh, uh, he's come to me, come with me to some conferences to hear Peter Yost and Stephen basic talk. And, uh, you know, you're in a room full of building scientists and, and Al comes from, uh, the nautical and, and airline and military side of things. So, uh, you know, when it comes to 75 Pascal buildings and, uh, very tough, durable structures, uh, so, so 
he's making that point very clear. All structural envelopes are not created equal. And cheers to that. That's no BS. Well, that's it. You know, you got a couple guys telling you that uh, Jeffrey E. and Adams White – uh, I'm seeing a lot of offers of bourbon waiting for you uh, somewhere. You don't happen to like bourbon, do you, Mark? <laughs> I, I like it when it's in my glass. <laughs> yeah. You know, I heard a joke, you know, somebody said you have a, how do you know when you have a drinking problem? When, when, you, when you're out of it? When you run out. <laughs> All right, Rick, Hark Rick Hawkins. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is going back to what Jennifer was saying or into the, uh, your two times of hearing unquestionable things happening in the motel hotel room next to you, Brian, or yep. snoring a husband in the snore room. So yep. I, I love it. So listen, guys, this has been an awesome conversation. If there is anything that anybody has seen that I've missed or I miss calling somebody out, uh, just let us know and we'll make sure that uh, we let people know who you are uh, on the next show. We love the fact that uh, so many people tuned in and joined us today. I mean, what do you guys think? Brian, what do you think? Do you, do you enjoy being on the show? Yeah, it's been, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to make my videos, right? So I made a, I made a video 24 minutes long, okay? There's 200 people that have watched that thing, but it is the analyticals version of building wall assemblies and what it takes, how to make effective our values. I mean, I go into the weeds, right, really far. And so this has been nice because we've kept it pretty high level. No, I mean, um, we're, we're just trying to keep it simple, right? We're not make, trying to make it complicated. That's right. Um, we're uh, uh, the the tea stud sells itself. Mark and I we're we're fun. We're energetic, and uh, we're thankful to have Mark on board. He's a ener energizer bunny, right? And um, uh, we're looking we're look just looking forward to going forward, right? We're seismic compliant. We're yeah, yeah. Uh, wind wind load five compliant. Everybody's used this at 24 inches on center, except for one wall in uh, in Colorado that was a 120 mile an hour shear wall. And so they had to go 12 inches on center in the one spot, 12, 12, 12 feet tall, 12 inches on center. Otherwise it's all been at 24. So they save 24% uh, of the studs and attached to the 24% of the studs is 2000 fasteners that you just don't have to have right there. It's not like it's gonna make your structure uh, stronger we make it just as strong and, yeah. and use less timber. So it's about your carbon footprint, right? It's, a car, it's reducing the carbon footprint when you build your structure. It's reducing the carbon footprint for whoever owns that structure forever, right? You gotta try to make the best of what you possibly can with what you're given. We just happen to create a new, a, a new Lincoln Log set, right? And, um, and, we're, and we're excited. So I think you should be, and I, I think, I, I, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy hearing this higher level conversation because I know even with Mark, you guys love to get in the, you love to get into the trenches, the weeds and, you know, 454 in building science. But, you know, for, for the average builder out there, they're just trying to still figure this stuff out. So yeah. breaking it down in layman's terms and not keeping it too high tech, I think is uh what's so fun about having you on the show here. And I think it's going to reach a lot of people and they're going to, they're going to kind of get it a little bit better now. Um, all right. Well, listen, I don't see any more comments out there. Uh, if we missed anybody, like I said, Mark, uh, you want to take us out today? You want to, you want to, you got any, well, all right. I know you have words of wisdom and I know you're going to come up with some silly saying that, that just comes off the top of your head, which I love because they're always so memorable. Give me something, man. Uh, no I, I, I don't have a lot of juice for today because I, I, uh, I, I just enjoyed, I enjoyed the products, uh, d discussion and the wall discussion. But what I'll add is, um, Dave, you come from the modular world. You come from the manufactured home innovation world, right? And, uh, your, your audience is in tune with that and they're, and they're jumping leaps and bounds all the time. And, uh, and all three of us come from the, the site build construction world as well. So when we bring uh, the, the precision and the performance of, of offsite manufacturing with the engineered products and, and, the, and the science, the building science, the BS of it all together, uh, what's the solution, right? 
the solution is, uh, or what is the reward of that? The reward is what we always get back to, right? More smiles, happier people because they're healthy, they're comfortable, they're not worried about their buildings, they're enjoying their spaces, right? And uh, that's why all of us are here. Like, yeah, we make a joke about BS, but uh, it's about it's about our network and and all these different folks that came in. Some know you, some know Brian, some know me, some know Jennifer, some we haven't met, and uh, you know. We come to the table, and the building around our table is more blessed. It is. I agree with that. I agree with that. It, it just becomes it becomes fun to talk about and fun to share knowledge. So, um, listen, I love it, Mark. Thank you so much for the kind words. Next week, uh, we will be back here with BS Friday. And then also on June 3rd, Wednesday, we're going to have uh, Bruce Thompson from Urbaneer on talking about ADUs. So I just wanted everybody to know that we will have Bruce Thompson on next week talking about ADUs. Uh, we'll be doing that from Pittsburgh, by the way. We're going to Pittsburgh this week, next week. And, and, and tomorrow, uh, people can join uh, for uh, Coffee with Dave, right? Send your coffee cups for Coffee with Dave every Saturday. Call for coffee mugs. We want the coffee mugs. You want to know where to send them and we'll drink out of your mug and give you a plug on, on one of our shows during the week. So uh, if you're interested, hook me up just in the comments and we'll tell you where to send it. So my T stud one is in the mail. I heard it's yeah. uh, it's in the factory getting printed. Uh, it's customized just for you. It says T stud. <laughs> I love it. All right, fellas. Hey, Brian, man. Thanks so much. I really, really do appreciate it. I had, I, I had a blast and I, I hope you found it uh, worthwhile as well. I only got one thing left to add. Uh, I, I see the comment over there. Uh, when you go 24 inches on center, half inch high strength drywall. If, if we, if that, if that drywall went to come around, you'd have had to have five ace drywall, eighth of an inch extension jam on top of the extension jam. Mm. Some people might not have liked us, but half inch high strength drywall. Okay. Reduce your carbon footprint, save people money. That's it. That's We're it. done. You, you good? You got it all out? We're out. <laughs> well, Bye. everybody, hey, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dave Cooper, davecooper.live. My host, Mark Willie, and we're always talking about building science on uh, BS Fridays, and it is full of BS. We will see you together next Friday, and uh, be sure to. Tune in for the other ones and check out the uh, give us a drum roll.